Although Manchester United have completed three new signings this summer in Hoyland, Mountain and Anana, and Eric Tenog wants to bring in two more signings, a midfielder and a centre-back, with Amrabat and Tobedo top of that list. And with Fred pretty much set and confirmed to leave this week, Amrabat to United is almost done. You kind of know it's going to happen, but unless another club puts in a, a big bid, it should happen very soon. And in today's video, we're going to talk about how Eric Tenog plans to line up next season, including the five new signings. Who Eric Tenog wants to sell, who Eric Tenog wants to buy. We're going to not include the players he wants to sell, the players that will go out on loan. We're going to include who he wants to buy. And we're going to look at seven different ways Man United could line up next season with Tenog's planned squad. The way he plans to play transitions football, his tactics, and then we'll get into the depth as well. So people like Facundo Polistri expected to go out on loan, so it's not really included in this. Alvaro Fernandez linked to a loan move to Burnley. Hannibal Meshby linked to a loan move to Luton. He, Luton. He's not expected in this. Tom Heaton would be backup keeper. It's now been announced he will stay because the Suzuki deal has fallen through. Anana will obviously be the keeper, but it says player one in some of them for some reason. And then of course, the incomings, Hoyland, Mount Anana, Amrabat and Tolibo are included. McTominay expected to go. Maguire is in the plan to go. Don expected to go. Fred to go. They will not be in, uh, included. And this was said by Simon Joseph the Mail. It was said that Manchester United hoped to push through with the sales of Donny van der Beek and Fred this week while they await for offers from Maguire and Bailly. United need to sell before they make their transfer move for Amrabat and Tolibo, but they are the targets. So this is what United plan to do, and this is how they'd line up if they pull it off. So on the screen is how I think. Tenog's preferred 11 will be. This starting lineup is what I think is Tenog's ideal 11 going into next season. Hoyland up front, Rashford on the left, Anthony on the right. I've gone with Delo over Wan Bissaka, even though Wan Bissaka has been better in pre season. Delo seems to be who Tenog just personally prefers. Like, even with Anthony on the right, Anthony Barr, the other game, had been iffy in pre season, which is fantastic versus Lens. I think he would play over the likes of Sancho because Tenog likes Anthony on the right. Obviously, Bruno, Mount, Casemiro, Shaw, Martin as Baran, and then player one as Anana. I just forgot to fill that in. That is probably what Eric Tenog views as his strongest starting eleven right now. Even with the signings that Amrabat and Tolibo, they would very much be on the bench, but I think in certain games, Amrabat will come on. So the second line I've actually shown is what er the lineup I think Eric Tenog could deploy against teams like Liverpool and Manchester City. It's the exact same lineup, but actually it's a little bit different. Mason Mount has been swapped with Amrabat. The United need that de de defensive stability. When you're playing a big team that's going to have a lot more possession, you need more control, you need to make sure your progressive bar passes are better, you need to retain the ball better. There's Amrabat there to help Casemiro. Amrabat there to make Casemiro's job easier, but add some balance in midfield. While I like Casemiro, Bruno and Mount, I do think there was a little, little bit of a lack of balance there. I think Amrabat adds that much needed balance. You could potentially see Mount, Bruno, Amrabat and Casemiro all play together with one of them being shipped out wide. Not a big fan of Bruno being shipped out on the right or the left-hand side, but Eric Tenog does like to play Bruno out wide, does like he likes to play Rashford centrally. But personally, I think Tenog's strongest 11 would potentially be this against the likes of Man City and Liverpool, where he'd actually replace Mount for Amrabat to add defensive stability. Just like we saw most of the games was Casemiro, Bruno, Eriksen. But sometimes he swapped Eriksen out for Fred in certain games and it worked. And I think Amrabat will be that Fred. Amrabat's not going to be signed until Fred comes in. Mesa Mount is the Ericsson, Amrabat is the Fred and Tenog's plan. Obviously, there are going to be times we play Mount, Bruno, Amrabat and Casemiro, all four midfielders. And I think in that case, then Mount or Bruno would be pushed out wide, um, depending on who plays. It could be Mount pushed out on the left and Rashford playing as a striker and um, um, Anthony on the right. Or it could be Bruno pushed out on the right, Rashford playing as the left winger. Uh, Hoyland playing as a striker and then Mount Amrabat Casemiro in midfield three. I think there's going to be games where you're going to see both Mount and Bruno pushed out wide. Whatever wing they play on will depend on if it's Rashford on the left, Anthony on the right, Hoyland up top. But one way I do expect Man United to line up and potentially change it up is actually going to go with a diamond formation. I know Tenal will probably stick with more of a 4 3 3, but we actually saw in pre season he was almost playing like a 3 1 6 formation in game. I could also see Tenal switching to kind of a 4 triple 2 or at least a 4 4 1 2 1 2 diamond-like formation with obviously his same back five, uh, Casemiro holding with Amrabat and I'd probably say Mason Mount just above as those kind of two eights but one of the, Amrabat would be the deeper eight. Bruno playing in that number 10 role and Hoyland and Rashford as split strikers and the reason I expect to see this is purely because he, he said he wants to be the best transition side in the world. 
we saw in that lens game how good Man United were in transitions, how it was about get the ball, move the ball forward quickly, a little bit like Klopp's Liverpool. And I think with Hoyland and Marcus Rashford being particularly rapid, we could see this. I know Garnacho isn't a striker, but I think Garnacho could potentially be deployed there. Anthony could potentially be deployed there. But if there are injury issues, we know Anthony likes to get an injury here and there. I wouldn't be shocked if we do see a few games, potentially if he needs to change up, or potentially even against someone like City, Liverpool or Arsenal, where he wants an another body in midfield because he wants to get hold of that midfield. I could see Rashford and Hoyland playing as those split strikers as well. Another way that Tenon reportedly might line up, and this is, this is something I'm not a fan of, I don't want this to happen, but we know that Ten Hag is going to play Sancho centrally. And I quite like Sancho in that false nine position because I'd rather Sancho play centrally than Rashford play centrally. I think it's Rashford on the left, Sancho false nine, Anthony on the right for me. First game of the season versus Wolves because Hoyland doesn't fit. But another way we might see United line up is Rashford or Hoyland as the striker. But actually Jaden Sancho in the 10 role. When Jaden Sancho was subbed on versus R RC Lens, he actually came on in more of an 8-10 role. And potentially he could be in the 10 role with... Rashford on, on, on the left, Bruno on the right and Hoyland up top. Potentially could even be in the 10 row with Mount on the left, Bruno on the right and Casemiro and Amrabat in behind. You know, there was that a feeling that Ten Hag might want to experiment with almost two midfielders deep in Casemiro and Amrabat and then Sancho, Bruno, Hoy, Sancho, Bruno, Mount as three eights, two wide-sided eights, one central eight and actually have kind of play a five. It's almost like a four, five, one kind of formation but very centrally we know that Tenog in the way he plays really likes to stretch stretch the width of the pitch and be a transition based side and this does not suit what Tenog does at all but it's something that he might change up in formation something that I don't think I'm the biggest fan of um but something that he could potentially do the reason Rashford is there at striker or not Hoyland is just because I feel like if Tenog's going to pick any attacker it's, it's always Rashford at the end of the day he scores loads of goals as well. Um, so another way that Tenar could line up, and this is obviously what we saw versus RC Lens, what Tenar currently views as the strongest lineup, and potentially the lineup we're going to see versus Wolves, is just Rashford striker and Garnacho on the left, Anthony on the right, Bruno, Mount, Casemiro, back five as normal. But we might also see versus Lens actually Garnacho on the bench because he's great for impact, Sancho essentially, Rashford on the left, Anthony on the right because Sancho is better on the left. Uh, in my personal opinion, and I think that obviously Sancho has proved he's good centrally. But if we actually look at all the options here on the screen, I'm going to show you the depth. And I wanted to show you the depth because I've, I've said obviously five new signings. What's Ten Hag's plan? How will United line up with five new signings? And one of the things I, I, I didn't really involve was the depth, Todd, Toddabo. He obviously will come in for Varane. Varane gets injured a lot. He would just fill in in that Varane role. He would be a Maguire replacement. United's plan is to sell Maguire, bring in Toddabo there at the back. Um, Wan Bissaka Delo, I think that is 50 50. That's going to go either way. To be honest, that spot's really up for grabs. I've got Malassia back up left back because um, Alvaro Fernandez is reportedly going to go out on loan. In the midfield, I've got Casemiro and then Amrabat's Casemiro's backup. Amrabat could also play next to Casemiro, but I've just put Kobe Mainu in as, as Mount's backup. I'm going to see Mainu as the McTominay replacement. Um, sorry, sorry, Amrabat as the top McTominay replacement. Mount as more, I'd probably say. Donny's replacement and uh, Maino is Fred's replacement for this example. Three midfielders out, three in. Um, but obviously Mount, Eriksson, Bruno, all similar kind of players. Maino and Amrabat more similar. I could do the Casemiro or next to Casemiro, but you can see the depth there in midfield. And then attack, you've got Hoyland, you've got Sancho and Rashford that can play centrally. I think Martial will stay. I think it'll be impossible to sell him. So he could, you could even add him there. I've gone with Ahmad and not Palestri. I think Palestri will go out alone and because Ahmad's injured, he will stay. So I've gone with Sancho, Ahmad, Anthony on the right-hand side. And then obviously Rashford, Garnacho, Sancho can play on the left-hand side. Sancho's versatile, can play across the three. I think we'll see Sancho deployed more centrally like in pre-season. But they're the different ways you might can line up the different formations um, obviously, I've shown you what I expect United to do, other things United can do. And this is clearly Ten Hag's plan. Those five signings, Maguire, McTominay, Donny, Fred, Dean Henderson, Eric Bailly, out. Mejbri, Pelestri, loans. Alvaro Fernandez, loans. Um, Aaron Diallo will stay because he's injured. Hopefully, Kobe Maynard will be back soon. Right backs up for grabs. Potentially, another player needed in midfield. Potentially, a big, big striker like Harry Kane in January if we get Qatar. But that is my video on how Tenor could line up Man United next season, what his plan is. I hope that was a clear video for you. It's not really, ooh, just not that. It's not really a transfer news video. It's more of what we could do, different ways we could line up. And I think what Ten Hag's plan is. Please do smash that like button. Of course, subscribe down below if you're new. There will be a news video early morning. Unless there's any breaking news, then there'll be a news video late tonight. See you next time. Bye.